Welcome back to another episode of Introductory Organic Chemistry. Today we're going to go through the practice problems that I assigned last lecture as an exam. So to recap the exam, there was a few rules. You're allowed to use any elemental metals and inorganic reagents such as thionyl chloride, copper iodide, etc. You're allowed to use triphenylphosphine, tetrahalomethanes, and other uh, reagents such as sulfonates, thiourea, coupling reagents like pybop or hatu. You're also allowed to use bases as long as you're using them as only as a base. You're allowed to use solvents if you want to use solvents. Uh, and you're allowed to use protecting group or enolate traps. You're allowed to use catalysts if you need to use catalysts for any purposes. So in this first problem, we want to convert this benzylic alcohol into a phenol. And so what I would propose is first for each of these problems that we're going to draw the retrosynthetic scheme. So starting from the product, we're going to go one step at a time and work our way back to the starting material. And so when we draw an arrow like this, it's a retrosynthetic arrow. So it's not that this is being converted into this, but rather this is derived from this. Okay, so I would propose that one way that we've talked about so far to make phenols is to take an ester like this and hydrolyze it. An ester like this could be prepared via a Bayer-Villager oxidation. Now it would also be possible if you wanted to have like an acetate or something there, it would just take more steps to uh, form this. And so we know that because if we had a formate and we did a Bayer-Villager oxidation, this aldehyde would selectively put an oxygen between the benzene ring and the carbonyl. And so this is why a formate ester would be an okay intermediate. Then it's only one step away from our starting material, which would just need to be oxidized. So in the forward direction, first we would take this benzyl alcohol and do a DMP oxidation. You could do other oxidations, but this is the one I've chosen here. This would give you the benzaldehyde. You could then treat this benzaldehyde with MCPBA and do a Bayer-Villager oxidation, giving you this formate ester. And finally, a hydrolysis reaction affording the phenol. Okay, in the next problem, we have bromobenzene and acetone, and we have to make alpha methyl styrene oxide. So what I would propose is in the backwards direction, first we would want to do an epoxidation to get back to this uh, styrene oxide. From this, there could be an elimination reaction from something like this alcohol. And then we would be able to do a Grignard reaction between uh, phenyl magnesium bromide and acetone. And so in the forward direction, first we take bromobenzene, treat it with magnesium to prepare this Grignard reagent. This Grignard reagent could then react with acetone to make this alcohol. This is called cumyl alcohol. Cumyl alcohol could then undergo an elimination with sulfuric acid to afford this alkene, which would finally be epoxidized with MCPBA, affording this epoxide. Now let's go to problem three. So problem three, we have this benzylic alcohol. We have meldrum's acid. Somehow we have to get this dihydroxy meldrum's acid derivative. And so in the, in the reverse direction, we could imagine that this 1,2-diol has come from a dihydroxylation reaction of an alkene. Yes, this is electron deficient, but it could still be done. This could be derived through what's called a Canovan angle condensation, which is just a special type of aldol condensation between an active methylene compound and an aldehyde, which would just be an aldol condensation. Uh, and this could be derived from benzyl alcohol via oxidation. So first we could do an oxidation such as a PCC oxidation. PCC stands for pyridinium chlorochromate, if you don't remember. We could then react this with meldrum's acid in the presence of a base such as sodium ethoxide. This would give us this alpha beta unsaturated uh, diester, which could then be treated with uh, osmium tetroxide and NMO to do an upjohn oxidation. Now this might be a little bit of a sensitive product. It looks like it could do a retroaldol very easily, um, but it's uh, still an interesting compound nonetheless. Okay, problem four. We have this ketone, cyclohexanone, and we have 1,3-propanediol, and somehow we have to get this complex thioether. While this might seem a little bit challenging at first, this is actually quite a doable problem. So first, you'd be able to break this to cyclohexane thiol, as well as allyl chloride. You could also use something like allyl bromide if you want, but I chose chloride because there's easier ways to make chlorides most of the time. It would then be possible to start with something like 1,3-propanediol, uh, dichloropropane. This should be a chloride, not a hydroxy. Uh, and this 1,3-dichloropropane could be derived from 1,3-propanediol. So if we want to make this cyclohexanediol piece, we could derive that from cyclohexyl bromide, which could be made from cyclohexanol, which could be made from cyclohexanone. So in the forward direction, we would start with cyclohexanone and do a reduction using sodium borohydride, usually in methanol. That would afford our cyclohexanol. We could then do an Appel reaction with uh, triphenylphosphine and carbon tetrabromide with a, in the presence of a base. This would give us our cyclohexyl bromide. 
Then finally, we could treat this with thiourea, and upon hydrolysis of the thiour thiouranium salt, we would get uh, cyclohexane thiol. Cyclohexane thiol will be used in our final step. So what we could do next is treat 1,3-propanediol with thionyl chloride. This would give us 1,3-dichloro uh, propane. It's also possible, just technically speaking, that this also might just eliminate to the desired product the allyl chloride. I'm not 100% sure, but I have a gut feeling that if you tried to do this reaction, it might just eliminate to make allyl chloride. But if it didn't, you get 1,3-dichloropropane, which you could treat with a base to eliminate, such as terpetoxide, to give us allyl chloride. And then finally, we just couple the last two pieces together. We take allyl chloride and cyclohexane thiol, in the presence of a base, giving us our thioether product via SN2 or an SN2 prime reaction. Okay, problem five is a little bit more challenging, and you'll see why in a minute. So what I would propose is that first we uh, take this benzyl alcohol with this methyl group and the uh, alcohol here. We only would alter the uh, epoxide group, and I'll show you why in a second, because there's a couple tricks here that you might be worried about. We would then do this epoxidation on this styrene to make the epoxide, and we would do uh, another reduction from the aldehyde and the chloride. So you may recall that lithium aluminum hydride will reduce carbonyls, but it will also reduce benzylic halides very easily. And so later on in the sequence, I do an MCPBA oxidation on the styrene to make this epoxide. Now, if we still had that starting aldehyde and we treated it with MCPBA, because it's a benzaldehyde, specifically an aldehyde and because it's connected to a benzene ring, we would worry about getting a side reaction of Bayer Villager. So instead of just being able to do one lithium aluminum hydride reduction to reduce the epoxide, the aldehyde, and the chloride, we are going to do two lithium aluminum hydride reductions just to make sure that the MCPBA reaction is clean. So to recap, MCPBA might also very easily uh, do a Bayer Villager, and we want to avoid that, which is why we're doing this stepwise. So first we do an LAH reduction on the starting material, that gets rid of the chloride, reduce, reduces the aldehyde to the alcohol. Then we do an MCPBA epoxidation on the styrene to get the styrene oxide. The styrene oxide can then be reduced with LAH to afford the final product. Relatively straightforward, just uh, kind of have to be a little bit clever about it. Okay, and the final problem, probably the hardest one in this whole exam. First. Uh, we have these three compounds, and we have to make the compound on the right shown here. And so the way I would break this apart is this could be derived from an aldol reaction with this TMS enolate, uh, this TMS enol ether rather, and acetaldehyde. We know that acetaldehyde could be made through the oxidation of ethanol. We also know that um, this could be derived through a conjugate addition with a cuprate, like a Gilman reagent, and a Gilman reagent could be derived from bromomethane. Finally, the cyclohexanone could be derived just through an aldol condensation, a self-condensation of this reaction, an intramolecular aldol condensation. Okay, so in the forward direction, we could do a Swern oxidation, which would just be done with oxalyl chloride, dimethyl sul uh, DMSO, dimethyl sulfoxide, as well as a base such as triethylamine. This is such a small carbon building block that normally you wouldn't actually do a Swern oxidation for this. They probably have an industrial oxidant cat uh, catalyzed product process that just very easily does this with air, but in the lab we'd have to still do something like a Swern oxidation, um, or you just buy it. You could also take uh, bromomethane, treat it with lithium to get methyl lithium, and then if you treat methyl lithium with copper iodide, two equivalents of methyl lithium will give you this uh, dimethyl uh, lithium cuprate. Okay, the self-aldol condensation of this keto aldehyde will afford this cyclohexanone, and you could do a conjugate addition to get this TMS enol ether. Then, if we want to re-unmask our enolate at low temperatures to make sure we only get aldol addition on this side, uh, we could do that with methyl lithium. We could also do something like uh, tetrabutyl ammonium fluoride. But because we didn't talk about activators in the uh, rules, we'll just do methyl lithium, which we just prepared up here anyway. And then we would trap out the enolate with acetaldehyde at a second step. Because if the methyl lithium was added to this acetaldehyde, it would just react and make isopropanol or isopropoxide. And so overall, we've done it. We've arrived at this compound. And so hopefully these problems have been useful for testing uh, all the different reactions we've talked about so far in the course. If you have any questions or if you have any really good solutions that you want to post below, I'd be happy to see them. And if you want, you could leave a like and subscribe. Have a, have a great day. Happy Easter.